Hi, my name is Jason with Legacy Arms International. Today I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about NFA or National Firearms Act firearms and the different types and why I can possess some of the things that you see in all the videos that I'm making. I get a lot of questions on my YouTube channel um, from people mostly out of, the, out of the United States because the laws seem very strange to anybody outside the U.S., but they're honestly pretty un, you know, difficult and confusing even to people that live within the United States. So um, I thought I would just kind of talk through it a little bit. So basically prior to 1934, um, there weren't a lot of machine guns out there, but you had things like the Maxim machine gun, the Thompson machine gun, submachine gun, and those were readily available. You could walk into a store and as long as you could afford it, you could buy one. In 1934, the U.S. government decided to regulate essentially uh, the sale and possession of what they called uh, Title II firearms. So anything that you would normally buy in a gun store, a handgun, uh, a long-barreled rifle, long-barreled shotgun are all considered Title I firearms. So the National Firearms Act of 1934 created Title II, um, which essentially pertained to suppressors, short-barreled rifles, meaning a rifle with a barrel less than 16 inches, short-barreled shotguns with a barrel less than 18 inches, and AOWs, which stand for AO, or any other weapon. It also, uh, for the first time, regulated machine guns. And they decided to create, essentially, a system by which, uh, in order to own an NFA device, you paid a $200 tax stamp. Now, in 1934, a Thompson submachine gun cost about $200. So the idea was, given that that was you know, more than a month or two salary for the average person, by creating the ownership tax that was equivalent to the price of that submachine gun, it made it cost prohibitive for the average person. And so the idea was to try to slow down the sale of a lot of these firearms. And the $200 tax stamp has never changed. So here we are in 2022, and we're still paying a $200 tax stamp to own these, these firearms or, or uh, NFA devices. So essentially there's three types of machine guns, a transferable machine gun, a pre-sample machine gun, and a post-sample machine gun. And I'll get back to that in a second, but in 1968, with the Gun Control Act of 1968, that was the first line drawn in the sand for machine gun ownership. And what it did is essentially prevented the importation of any foreign-made full automatic firearm for civilian transfer and sales. So uh, anything made after 1968 could be imported for federal government, law enforcement, uh, military, and select dealer use. In um, May 19th of 1986, the Firearm Owners Protection Act of 1986 was passed, and it was at that point that essentially all full automatic firearms were registered um, to that point, and that created the next line in the sand, creating essentially transferable machine guns. So. When people ask me, you know, how, how are you able to possess these? Can I buy a machine gun? The answer is yes and no. It depends on the firearm and it depends on the state that you live in. So a transferable machine gun, just to clarify, is any domestically manufactured machine gun made before May 19th, 1986, or a foreign, made, foreign manufactured and imported full automatic machine gun made before 1968. So all of your MP5s that are transferable, AK-47s, those were made before 1968. But your M16s could be made all the way up until 1986. So basically a transferable machine gun is legal to own for civilian use if you live in a state that allows it. Different states have different policies on NFA controlled items, so you have to look and see what your state allows. But if you can own it in your state and you can legally possess a firearm, you can also legally own an NFA device, specifically a machine gun. Um, in 1986, when they created the registry, I don't know the exact number, but I've been told about 180,000 full automatic machine guns were registered. Well, every year that we get further away from 1986, there's fewer that are in full functioning you know, condition and operate, operating condition. So they get taken off the registry as they're destroyed. And that means there's fewer and fewer that are able to be transferred. There's fewer and fewer that are new in the box as opposed to completely you know, beat up and destroyed. So the price of transferable machine guns continues to go up. Um, and it's a huge investment for a lot of people. I mean, people purchase them for investment purposes, um, but it's a hugely cost prohibitive as well. A pre-sample machine gun is essentially any foreign made firearm made after 1968 
but before 1986 that was brought into the States for the purposes of being essentially a demonstration sample um, for law enforcement and military. So dealers were able to bring those into their shop and, and possess them. And if a dealer gives up their license, they can continue to own a pre-sample machine gun. So pre-sample machine guns cannot be transferred to individual civilian to civilian sales on a Form 4 like a transferable machine gun, but the pre-samples can be owned by dealers within their dealership, and when they give up their business and close the business, they can keep them. So a pre-dealer sample is a foreign manufactured firearm, full automatic firearm that was imported after 1968 and before 1986. Any firearm that is full automatic capable that has been manufactured after 1986 is a post-sample machine gun. They are not able to be transferred or sold to civilians. They are only there for essentially law enforcement and military sales. And uh, if a dealer gives up their license, they have to relinquish those firearms. They can sell them to other dealers um, or destroy them, but it's not something that you hold on to once your, your business is shut down. The answer is to how am I able to possess some of these. So Legacy Arms International is a 07 FFL, meaning I'm a manufacturer of Title I firearms, and I possess an 02 SOT, Special Occ Occupational Tax, which means I'm a manufacturer of NFA devices. I can make and manufacture any short-barreled rifle, short-barreled shotgun, AOW, and machine gun and suppressor. The only thing I can't make under my license is a destructive device, which is a Type 10. So some of the machine guns that I, I use and, and showcase on my YouTube channel are transferable machine guns that I own personally or are owned by my business. Um, and, and I've had those long before I got into business and it's just something I've been collecting for a, a while. I have um, a couple pre-sample uh, firearms that basically were brought in for demonstration purposes. And a lot of what you see are, are manufactured post-sample machine guns that are there so that I can, you know, work with local law enforcement and, and essentially try to produce something for them. Some are factory made samples. So, you know, sometimes for instance, um, Heckler and Coke or Brugger and Thomae, uh, those will be like direct sales where I'm purchasing post sample machine guns from the company itself in order to turn around and showcase them and, and demonstrate them to law enforcement agencies to potentially sell them to them. Um, the reason we have that system in place is your average law enforcement agency isn't really in a position to buy one of every potential firearm out there that they're interested in um, just to test them and evaluate them. So people like me come along, we do a demonstration, we allow them to basically put them through their paces, and then if they decide they want to purchase something, we will often, as a dealer, facilitate an order through the company in order to get the right firearms for them and their agency. So post-sample machine guns are the more modern stuff. So when you th see things like P90s or SCARs or any of those firearms that have come out after 1986 and it's a select fire, um, in order to legally possess it, you have to be a essentially a, a NFA dealer or manufacturer. Um, so one last thing to touch on, you know, again, going back to the licenses, a 01 FFL is a dealer of Title I firearms, so all your normal stuff, and an 03 Special Occupational Tax, SOT. That's the 03 SOT is where people get the term Class Three license. And so a dealer, when you walk into your normal gun store, if they're selling suppressors, they're most likely an 0103, meaning they're a seller or a reseller of both Title I firearms and Title II NFA devices. They cannot manufacture anything. So the only way that they can get those devices is by purchasing them either direct from the company with a, a law enforcement demonstration letter or uh, essentially by buying them from a company, another FFL that's going out of business. The 0702, which is what I have is a manufacturing license that allows me to sell. So I can sell just like the retailers can, but I also have the ability to manufacture. And so we do that because we do a lot of research and development testing. Um, right now I do a lot of work with not only law enforcement agencies, but with, with the military and different government contracts. And that allows me to essentially create what they need either by 
uh, modifying something that's on the civilian Title I market or creating something from scratch or buying direct from a lot of the manufacturers in order to sell to them. So, uh, you know, the YouTube channel that I have is some wonderful, uh, exciting firearms. Some of them can be owned by individuals and most of them cannot. Uh, and that's why I spend the time showcasing these things because the reality is, is that a lot of these firearms are things nobody else is gonna get a chance to see, play with, or spend time with. So um, it's, it's a neat thing for me to be able to do this and enjoy it, and I try to share it with other people so that you can enjoy it as well.